Welcome to episode 5. The latest builds of Ensemble have DICOM capabilities built into them, which puts this on the top of my cool charts and also next in my hacking, hacking list. I'm going to show you here uh, how to rip through and coerce DICOM header information as the data set flows through your productions. As you can see here, we're running the 2010.2 field test. Uh, I'm going to be sending from a clear canvas Windows workstation to an Osiris workstation uh, on a Mac. Okay, here I'm going to try to make the demo crystal clear with this one picture here of what I'm trying to do. What we're going to be doing is sending a DICOM data set from a clear canvas workstation to an Osiris workstation on a Mac. Easy peasy. You do this all the time. Um, the clear canvas workstation is the SCU in this particular equation, and the Mac Osiris box is actually the SCP. Okay, so the one cool thing that's different here that we're going to do is we're going to put in a middleman here, put the heavy iron in of Ensemble, which actually serves as an SCP and an SCU. So we're going to put that man in the middle there to be able to deal with that data set before it's sent down to the SCP. So in order to do this, we need to set up some associations. They're called association contexts in Ensemble. The first one we need to say is, hey, um, Clear Canvas is allowed to send to me uh, ENS SCP within the production. So I'm going to open up a shell here, a C session. The instance name is Ensemble. I need a ZN to ENS demo. Everything I'm doing here is in the field test under ENS demo. Um, I didn't really write my own stuff here, but uh, I'm, I'm adding some things to it to make this demo work. So let me write this out. There it goes. I have created um, the left side of the equation, which is now Clear Canvas can talk to Ensemble. Now the other side is where Ensemble is actually the SCU, who is talking to an SCP in Osirix. There we go. Just to show you that in lights. And I would go down here. I think I got that on my clipboard. Go back up to the shell and I will paste. And I will run that. Okay, so I've ran it. I write my status code. What you need to pay attention to here is this utility. It actually has a blank parameter at the end there. So I'm putting in all the association contexts that are possible, which is um, not not very is very good for a demo, not quite efficient for prod. Um, if you if you are more specific about your classes that you put in there, you, the faster your associations will be. So I'm back to the portal and I'm going into the maintenance settings, and you can see. The, the two associations that I created, in addition to the ones I created for testing, using the utility on the back end. So now that you see them there, as I click through here, you can see the presentation context all there, and that's what that utility did for me. It created everything in there, and let's go down to the other one, SCU. So we should now be able to communicate with the Ensemble instances from the SCUs. Okay, so we have our association set up. Let's hook up our production. And I'm trying to paint a crystal clear picture for you again here. Uh, on our left hand side is Clear Canvas. Here in the middle is Ensemble. And in our right, right here is Osiris. So if you're thinking left to right, I'm going to send the study from the left here, which is um, sending to ENSSCP with a AE title of clear canvas and it's going to be sending to here which is the SCU which is ensemble sending to the remote AE title of Osirix over here whoops sorry about that and I'm going to double check here in Osirix and see what my AE title actually was and it's, oh, it's set to Osiris test from my testing earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And I should be good there. So Ensemble will send to Osiris and the AE title should match. Let's go on the other side here since I found that discrepancy. I'll go ahead into Clear Canvas. Where's the, where, oh, DICOM server. I'm going to go in there. And yeah, it's Clear Canvas sending to port 1112 on Ensemble. So Everything should be hooked up. If it is, I should, I'm going to send a C echo. Here it is. I verified it and it's successful. So I can send from Clear Canvas to Ensemble 
successfully. So if you want to take a look at the setup here, I'm sending the ENSSCP on 11112. And if you look at the business service on this side, it's port 11112. And it's sending through the process, which goes over to Osirix. And I think we are all hooked up. So that is going to be the beef of our presentation. Okay, so now Ensemble is in the middle. It's the middleman, so what can it do? Well, as I mentioned earlier, we're in ENS demo. All the magic happens in the business process. This particular process is in demo. Demo.dicom process.storage. In this class is where all the magic happens. This is where um, most of the demo is going to go. Uh, again, I stole this, and I'm just going to insert uh, my stuff here in a place on message where I thought was a good place to hack. And that would be right here on C store request. So in the production on message, I'm going to do a few things here. The first thing I'm going to do to show you is I'm going to show you that I can send without any modification a study from one side to the other. Whoops, that's in there. I got to delete my man Leroy out of there. I want to show you that I can send through Ensemble without doing anything to it. through Ensemble to the other side and see if it shows up. And let's see, we sent it and there it goes. And anonymized matches anonymized right here from Clear Canvas. So from Clear Canvas through Ensemble to Osirix unmodified. Now the first example that I'm doing is DICOM coercion, which is modifying the, the headers. I'm gonna go ahead and comment out some code here instead of typing it. And if you look here at what I'm doing, I'm going to be doing this using this method called set value at. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the accession number equal to Tommy Two Tones phone number there. And I'm also going to set the name equal to Leroy Jenkins at the data set dot patient name. So as it throws as it flows through the the production, I'm going to go ahead and set those values. On it. So let's see how that works out. I'm going to go to our anonymized patient. I'm going to send it to Ensemble. It's going to go through Ensemble. Let's wait for it over here. And it's the same study, but the name has been coerced, if you will, and changed. And there is Tommy Two Tones' accession number. So there is an example of modifying the DICOM header as it flows through the production, which is pretty cool. You can do a lot there. You can uh, maybe do a lookup, um, accommodate some uh, broken study things. So that was pretty cool. Now on to the second thing that we're going to do. What if there's some pretty neat information in the DICOM headers you just want to do something with? Um, a common demo that I do is the, um, the dosing, you know, a patient dosing database where you have specific parameters from the modality that show what kind of dose was, was given to the patient. And we're going to go ahead and grab those values from the header and database them in a cache class. So Let's look here at what I'm doing up on top. Here I'm doing my getters. I'm grabbing a bunch of data. And I'm doing the get value ats, and I'm grabbing the patient name, the accession, the data set. And then what I'm doing here is I'm instantiating a class that I built, which is, where is it? Let me see here. Let me refresh. There's a class that I built, a very simple one, episode 5, DICOM, dosing class, that just stores a couple of properties in it, you know, five or so. And what I want to do is I want to be able to display that on a web page to say, hey, this is all the all the rows of patients that went through and here's all their dosing. So maybe somebody can make sense of this later and, and use it for a patient safety type database. So here's a, a, a sample Zen MVC form. It doesn't have anything in it here. What I'm going to do is. Oh, yeah, I do want to show you this really quick. This is. It, it, there is really no EDI manager for DICOM yet inside here that I could find, so I, I was having trouble mapping what the values were. So I, I wrote this utility called DICOM Buddy about six years ago, and I found use for it. So I'm going to show it here. Uh, it's not to toot my own horn, but I found a use for it. It's basically to find what the name is of the DICOM tags, and I think it uses the DCMTK um, library. And if I want to search for something like KVP, it'll tell me exactly what tags they are. So this helps me in, in doing my get value ads and set value ads uh, in here. And I have that out on uh, an old, old blog that I still 
still pay for, but don't post to it very much. Um, there is Dicom Buddy right there. Uh, you, you can download it there and I'll also put it in the show notes, but that'll help you just get to it. So what do we got here? Okay, I'm going to change a couple things here to make this person different. Let's see. Um, I'm going to change the accession number to all ones. And I'm going to leave it as Leroy Jenkins. And I'm going to compile my code. So now I should be writing to that class as the data set flows through. See if it makes it to the other side. It does. Leroy Jenkins is there. Let's pull up that Zen page and refresh. And bam, there it is. So Leroy Jenkins, I stored the information as it flew through. Pretty cool, huh? I mean, you could do a lot with a lot of the DICOM header information uh, it, it, as you see fit. So I'm going to change this to something else just to prove to you it's not smoke and mirrors. I'll put myself in there. And I will change the assessment to uh, all twos. So let's go two, 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 two. Compile that guy. There we go. And I'm going to go back up to clear canvas and send it in to, let's see, ensemble. Sent in and, oh, bummer, I left Leroy there. Now, uh, the Osiris workstation uses UIDs or OIDs to uh, store that. So I got to delete this. I'm going to get rid of this and try that again. All right, I'm going to resend it through. Mm. So I send my anonymized data set through Ensemble. It should come through on the other side as me, which it does. So I coerced the data. It went through. More importantly, did it end up here? Let's refresh. Bam, yes it did. It did twice because the other time it actually went through but it didn't save on the, on the Osiris. So that's pretty cool. Um, an example of DICOM coercion and databasing DICOM tags in Ensemble. I'm pretty excited about uh, this new functionality in this product uh, in terms of routing and other things. So thanks for watching. This is episode five. Sponsored by Medical Imaging by Example. Come out and learn how to build and configure enterprise class medical imaging environments using open source technologies from industry mavens and developers with production tested experience. Hosted by the great Idea Foundry. Come out and hang with us.